What's going on, friend? In this episode, we're going to be making a nice punk rock tone in Amplitude 5 Max. I'm Jorge Lanza Sing now. We break it down, baby. Alright, thank you so much for being here once again. And remember, as usual, like, subscribe, and do all those cool little things that we like to do on YouTube so that you and I can stay in touch with each other. Anyway, like I said, we're going to be making a nice punk rock tone. And when I say punk rock tone, I know there's so many sounds that you're thinking about. But today, we're going to be making a rhythm guitar. Just imagine your favorite song in the riff. That's kind of like what we're looking for. And today, I'm going to lean heavily on like the studio side of it. Because the tone that I'm going to try to make, it's something that's going to be a little bit like record ready. And if you're trying to make a record, hopefully this helps you a little bit. Let's get a guitar. <laughs> today, we're going to be using... My Gibson Les Paul Studio because it's very punk rock. I mean, it's not an SG, but it's the closest I have. So let's just do it. All right, so here we are in Amplitude 5. And this is like the default tone that you're going to have. It's like a Marshall. So let's just hear what it sounds like. Pretty good, but that's not exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that modern tone. So we're going to go right here. And usually my favorite amp to do this kind of tone it's either a Mesa Boogie Mark III or a triple rectifier or even a double rectifier, I guess. Any, any of those will work. And I'm pretty sure you could use like the Soldano if you have the free version. And maybe we'll have to go in another episode to see that. But today we're going to be using this Mark III. So I love this amp. Let's see what we have. It's already so close to what I would like to hear. Okay, let's go to the back and turn that reverb down first and foremost. <laughs> A lot lower, maybe 0 0.2. 0 0.1 is enough. Now let's go back to what matters. So since we're starting from a default mode, I'm going to show you how I would approach the plugin if this is the first time I'm using it. Although I have a video right here that you can go check out and it's going to have a way more detailed version of what I'm going to do right now. So you can go check that out after. The first thing that I like to do is come right here where the cabinet is and change this room. Right now, if you can tell, this is like a, I don't know, maybe like a venue, like a hall. <laughs> There's even like a guitar case right here, and I like that a lot. So the first thing that I like to do is change that room to a studio. And I like the large studio. I feel like it does something really nice to the mid-range overall that creates so much more intelligibility in the notes, and I tend to favor it. The next thing I'm going to do is get my condenser C12 because... Who doesn't want C12s in the room? <laughs> and let's say if this tone is just for you jamming in your home, I would say maybe you can go here and like the mixer and let's say you can give it more width or whatever you want. But in this case, I'm not going to be doing that because I'm making a tone for recording, right? So let's close this. Okay, we have our room set up. We have C12s in the room mics. And now, of course, is this in my amp, I usually have a 57 and an 87. You can choose whatever you want, but these are the microphones that I feel give me the results that I want the quickest. Okay, so after doing all that, let's go through the amp and let's check a few sounds. You know what I mean? As soon as you hear this Mesa tone, it's really close. Like That's why I put a lot of emphasis in choosing the right piece for the right sound, because I feel like if you're choosing the right piece, all of a sudden everything just sounds exactly like it's supposed to sound. You don't find yourself tweaking every single knob and every single slider just to get to a somewhat passable tone, right? So that's a good advice right there. Okay, so if you're not familiar with this amp, it's super confusing because you have to push, you have to pull, you have to do all these things. But let's say right now what matters is that we are in the lead channel, right? And this is our lead drive, and this is our lead master. And as you can tell, we are all the way up to the top. But for example, in this case, you see we're boosting 80 hertz a lot. And it sounds really good. I really like it. But in the context of our recording, I don't need all those frequencies coming from the guitar because it's basically just noise and mud. That feels really good and I like it and I want to keep it, but not as much because I want to save those frequencies for the bass and the kick drum and the toms and even the snare sometimes. So let's just go to this conservative, I don't know, 5.8. And like I was saying, there's no need to have a lot of bottom end. We're not going to be chugging. This is punk rock. You know what I mean? So, yeah. 
that sounds pretty good, but what I really need is a lot more bite in the mid-range. Let's do it right here and see how much weight we get with this 240 hertz frequency. See what I'm saying? Like just that mid-range right there gave all the character of punk rock that I was looking for. But still, I think that maybe we can have a little bit more of these frequencies. I stand corrected. Let's go back <laughs> to 4. Wow, that 240 for this kind of music was like so amazing. And so right now you're going to be finding like, okay, I need a little bit more high end. And you probably are going to try to reach out to this EQ because it's very tempting. And you're probably going to then try to do this. But I feel like if you own Amplitude 5, you probably should do it in a different way. And let's just do the experiment and see what happens if I start like boosting these frequencies here in this amp. So right now, what's the thing that I notice the most when I push that high frequency? That I think I'm clipping my preamps. So let's check. Let's see what I'm saying. Okay, this would be the app of my Axe.io. And let's see what happens when I'm pushing this. I'm clipping. So let's turn it down a little bit. Okay, that sounds a lot better for my taste, but let's go back to the tone. So now you're going to say, wow, I need more distortion because we lost a lot, right? It doesn't feel that punk rock anymore. So what we're going to do, we're going to go try to find some sort of like pedal that's going to give us a nice little boost. Literally any pedal will work. And in the case of what we're doing right now, I would say maybe stay away from something like a Tube Screamer or like a Mud Honey or whatever thing that has a lot, or whatever one of these things that has too much character because we're just trying to boost the signal. And honestly, you maybe can do it just right here. Maybe let's try it. And honestly, you can probably just do it right here, but I don't like the way Amplitude sounds when you distort Amplitude. So let's just try to get a little bit of a boost. Uh, let's see. There's a booster right here. Anything else more fan? <clears throat> Anything else a little bit fancier? No, let's just try this. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> okay, now, this is like the slash booster. That sounds pretty good to me. Maybe this is too much boost. Let's try to do maybe 6 dB. Okay, after that big segue about distortion and gain, let's go back to our EQ. So now I'm starting to notice a problem with this EQ. Listen to what happens in the top end. It's like this constant, just like noise that doesn't go away, right? Listen. What I want to hear, it's more of the brightness of my tone, right? So let's just go back and turn this guy back to where it was at 6.5. So I still feel that you need that brightness that we had originally. And I feel like we lost a lot of that. Not all of it, but a lot. Now let's see what happens here. We're on 5.8. Let's do 6.8. See what's up. We're just roughly around a dB. That's very honky. Mm -mm. Let's go back to 5.8. And again, all these are instincts. Like I just hear something and I react to it. Like right now, I just felt like that's not the mid-range that I want. So in Amplitude 5, what you can do, you can go right here to this collection and just... Grab a nice EQ, put it right here, 
And here you can do a few things. First, I can add that little bit of mid-range that I like. And you can see here's where you're going to pick your frequencies. And you can boost right here. I'm going to be a little bit extreme right now. So we can hear what the frequencies are doing. Ooh, and now we're clipping. This is the perfect moment to show you what clipping amplitude sounds like. It almost sounds like a cable that's broken or something like that, right? <laughs> so let's turn it down. And I like to always sight in the side of caution and go all the way to like minus six or minus eight or something like that. I'm going to do minus seven, minus eight right now. Come on. There you go. Ah, 7.8 is good enough. And I know Jorge in post fix the volume, right, Jorge? And I'm going to turn this thing up. Okay, to me, that sounds really good right now. Maybe, of course, it's a little bit too much mid-range, but I just want to showcase different frequencies. Let's go and let's start, let's say, in the very beginning of what most people consider mid-range, 1.5K. Now let's hear the very top, 8.2. Almost no note, right? Only just like <laughs> crunchiness. So let's just find a happy medium and let's say 4.8. 4.8 for me, 4.8K, it's a frequency that most of the time works with almost any instrument. Now let's hear it without the EQ. I mean, other than the fact that we're gaining so much volume, let's try to fix that. Okay, much easier right there. It's like so much definition, and in my opinion, that's what we're striving for with guitars. We want to have a lot of definition in the harmonic content so that we can hear what the chord progression is doing and have all that nuance. And especially, I feel like when you have like really nice mid-range in a guitar, like, and what I mean really nice is that you put the mid-range exactly where you needed it for the particular song that you're doing, okay? Because mid-range and frequencies, I feel like a lot of people get it a little bit twisted in some kind of way because... They're not things that are just static. Depending on the song that you're doing and depending on the key and the chords that are happening in a certain moment, the frequencies are moving, are always moving. So it's very important to know exactly what you're trying to boost. Because for me, 4K right now means something very different that might mean for you if you're doing something totally different. So pay attention to that kind of stuff. But again, like I was saying, I feel like we have a lot of definition that we really need and we don't have all of that cloudiness in the bottom end. Just listen. <laughs> Now, if I turn it off. Which is still good, but this. It's a little bit better in the definition department. Let's give it a little bit of weight. So you can see right here where it says Hertz, that means bass. Let's go to like a sensible frequency, like let's say this 180. And this just boosted, but at the same time, let's get rid of whatever is like under 100. Now let's see about the volume. It 
And basically what I'm doing is try to gain what I'm trying to gain and then compensate so that I'm not losing anything that I feel like I'm losing when I gain what I'm gaining. I know that sounds complicated, but it's very easy. All I'm trying to say is there's things that I'm trying to gain when I push that little high mid-range knob, right? And then I feel like, okay, yeah, now I have the definition I want, but there was something about the balance and the weight to definition ratio that we had originally that I kind of want to salvage. And that's when I reach out for another frequency, right? Because in an EQ, all you're doing is just balancing the frequencies the way you want them. <laughs> That to me sounds pretty good. <laughs> and let's say if we're crazy and we want a little bit more top end, I would say stop. Think about it. You don't need it. Just kidding. If you need more bass, more top end, whatever you want, do it. But in my case, I want guitars to have as much mid-range as they can have. Imagine it like a mountain, right? Like in the center of the frequencies. The guitars have to be commanding that section of the mix, especially if you're going to like pan them wide in a mix. You want to have that mid-range there moving so that it gives a lot of width to your mix. Contrary to popular belief that you have to take away all the mid-range. And there is a lot of mid-range that we will take out, but we will take it out in the context of the song. But we're only going to take things out when we need it in the context of the mix. Let's say, for example, something about the vocals. You want to have weight there and the guitar is like interfering with it. You take it away from the guitar a little bit. It doesn't have to be static. You can find millions of ways to do it. But that's going a little bit too deep in music production. Let's get back to the guitar world. And if you want to learn a little bit more about mixing and production and that kind of stuff, let me know. Maybe we'll make a few videos about that. All right, let's get back to this. So basically saying that, I mean, this tone sounds pretty good to me already. Let's say what happens without the EQ. It has a lot of definition, which I wanted, but I still feel like it's too much hunk and a little bit more bass that I need. Let's see what happens if I lower the frequency to 100. There's something about the raw tone that sounds really good, right? But there's something about this tone that's starting to sound really, really good. Now let's go here to the top end. And let's give it a little bit of air. Okay, I think that's sounding pretty good. We just basically gave it a lot of mid-range. <laughs> Let's see, I think this is too much, this 100. I think I need to be 80. That feels a lot better. Let me check volume. Okay, to me, that's starting to sound really, really good. And now I feel like there's two avenues for this. And again, like we were saying, we are almost all the way up in our gain department, right? But let's say there's certain riffs that you need more distortion. I wouldn't be afraid or hesitate for a second to go get one of these friends over here. Maybe even just turn this thing up. Let's see what happens if we turn it up all the way. Let's see, we're on 5.8. Let's see, 10. I mean, that to me sounds pretty good already. I 
feel like at that tone right now, it's at a point that all you want to have, it's like more or less distortion. <laughs> To me, that sounds really, really good. And it's a really, really nice starting point for any recording session. But now that we handled the bottom end over there, why don't we get some of this back? Anyway, so there you have it. A punk rock tone. Pretty easy with Mesa Boogie and Amplitude 5. Let's go get a few conclusions. Zip! All right, we have a great tone already. Thank you so much for still being here and go to the comment section and let me know I'm still here so that I know that you're hardcore about getting a better tone. Let's just recap about what happened here. We needed a nice punk rock tone and this is my approach on getting great guitar sounds. And I want to say that maybe it feels a little bit like weird when I went to the EQ section because this feels like arbitrary, right? And, and a lot of it is. You're basically just doing what you want. You're just feeling what you want to hear. You're just reacting to what you want. And in my case, I'm doing this tone, thinking about records that I'm producing at this moment and the kind of frequencies that I'm needing. So knowing that I have that information with me, I want to share it with you. And this is exactly what I would do if I was producing for a record, a punk rock record, more leaning to like the pop punk than like the, uh, than like the old school stuff, because that's what I like to do. But I feel like this kind of like situation about the mid range, it's one of the most important things that you're going to do. And maybe right now on its own, it sounds maybe a little weird if you're not used to using EQ, but the idea is that this is going to help you in the context of a song, in the context of a band. And I'm not the only one to say this, go research both Joe Bonamassa or any guitar players that you want. And most importantly, any producers, any mixers, this is exactly how tones are made. For records, you have to find the nice little pockets of sound that you want to amplify and that you want the listener to pay attention to. And then the ones that you don't amplify, the listener is not going to pay that close attention, but it's still there. It's still part of the sound. So I feel like when you pay this close attention to having like a mid range, like I know I'm going to need accentuating the parts of the anatomy of the guitar that I need, like the chords, or do I need more rig? Do I need more noise? And you can see that when we're trying to talk about the EQ, I was concerned about the tss sound or the <laughs> distortion when we're clipping the plug-in or even when I heard the preamp was a little bit too hot. All these things are because you have to keep your ears open and you have to know what you want to hear. And when something happens that is not the way you want it, you go fix it, my friend. And if you didn't like my tone, but you follow my steps, you're going to make a tone that you want. This is the tone that I want for the records that I produce, but you are your own person and you can have the tone that you want. Just follow these simple like steps that I was doing, like go to this video, watch it again, go to the other videos that I have in the channel and just familiarize yourself with moving knobs and trying to listen so that you can get the sound that you want. And before I keep talking too much, remember, like if you like this video, definitely subscribe, stay warm, stay safe, go to the comment section down below and let me know what you think. Other than that, I'm out, my friend. Thank you for being here. Zip.